Atomic 99. Last one before we enter triple digits. This headset is driving me nuts. The 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 mouthpiece to it is too close to my face. Apparently, I have a f frontally fat face that just knocks into things. Anyway, let's try to get through this. So Jeff told me that ridiculous story. I should have just asked you. Yeah, he left parts out. After escaping the wrestling arena, I was taken in and raised by the defender of good, Captain Hero! I hate both of you. She has no imagination at all. Somebody call me, citizen? I loved Captain Hero. I found out, in fact, just in the last six months, because I saw on the front of some um, Archie comic that... Jughead at one point dabbled in being Captain Hero, and I'm sure there's been plenty of Captain Heroes since, but I just decided that was the most, I'm, I was just going for a most generic Superman, superhero ever. And the fun part was drawing it because I gave him Spider-Man eyes. I gave him a little top bandana thing. I'm not, uh, who wears a bandana like that? Is the Flash, or does Flash have something attached to his neck? I'm not sure. I don't really follow superheroes all that much. I just read, apparently, uh, The Incredible Hulk a lot, but so he's got his big H right there in his chest, and then he's got a small H up on the top of his head. Can't remember why I decided to do that, but I just did. And uh, his cape, you see flowing down behind him, but the cape attachment to the top of his... Is that... Is that technically lapel? I'm just going to hold this stupid thing. It's driving me nuts. Maybe my facial hair is too long. And... The smile. The smile was the big thing. He also has a slightly longer nose, or he's got more of a flint-shaped nose. He's actually drawn a lot like Flint. Um, whereas Flint always had a very triangular mouth, but Captain Hero is just teeth. He's always the teeth. The big, shiny, winning, bright, flashy smile. Like, Rrr. That's the sound effect of me trying to do a flashy smile. Um, to the end of Julie, Julie finally does come, come to Kenny and say, so, yeah, I, sh I, I should have just asked you, I'm sorry, Jeff told me a ridiculous story, so Kenny says, yeah, well, he left bits out. So here's the exciting part of what happened next. So after escaping the wrestling arena, I was taken in and raised by the... So, so Kenny is actually justifying the wrestling arena thing. I'd forgotten I'd done that. And then I actually was going to come back and do more about how Kenny got to this theater, how he got to this part of his life, and it did have a lot to do with this character of Captain Hero. Captain Hero at the moment is my Snuffleupagus character. Snuffleupagus back when I used to watch Sesame Street in the mid-80s, I think. He was actually, he was considered Big Bird's imaginary friend because he was never there. And he always said, oh, I have to leave now. And he wasn't there when someone came and said, oh, and, and everyone thought that Big Bird had an imaginary friend in Snuffle Snuffleupagus. So Captain Hero became Kenny's imaginary friend for a while in this comic before he finally was kind of seen by one or two other characters. I don't think he ever got seen by all of them. It wasn't accepted that he was there. He was kind of imaginary for a little while. But I wanted to make his story and his story with Kenny very interesting. I wanted to really work on that, but I didn't ever get around to it before the comic finished. So that's one of the unfinished things that I never did fix or deal with was the fact that in that second panel, after escaping the wrestling arena, I was taken in and raised by the defender of good, Captain Hero. That's as far as I ever took that. I wanted it to be really interesting. I wanted to... I, I seem to have these interesting uh, delves into fiction with someone being raised or sort of abandoned children being raised a different way. I can't be sure why. That's sort of depressing. But that's pretty much Comic 99. That is the first uh, appearance by Captain Hero. And I tried moving on from there. Julie's mouth seems a little blurry in the first one. That's probably one of those times where I drew a mouth and then I erased it, but with a bad eraser. Every now and then I had a really poor eraser, and every now and then I'd smudge the whole thing with my hand. I got better at not smudging, but the smudging continued. So, yeah, I guess that's it. So, tomorrow, triple digits. Triple digits. Comic 100 is tomorrow. Which means we are one-seventh of the way through. Oh, man. Okay. So, Comic 100, next.